This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. We are at ATA's MC&E 2024. We're in the Volvo booth. We're going to catch up with Peter Forhuva, President of Tr Volvo Trucks North America. It's an annual tradition. We always catch up with them at ATA. So let's head in and see what's going on with Volvo Trucks. Peter, hey, this is an ATA tradition, I think, that we always connect. End of the year, great to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Jason. Good to have you here. So let's touch on the market update. You mentioned that we're kind of in a soft or recovering market right now. What do you see going into 2025? Yeah, so we saw 2023 was very strong. 2024, uh, it was slower. You know, demand, supply is getting a little bit nearer. I think right now what we will see in 2025, I think the market will be stronger. Uh, at the same time, I think the big question is when. Uh, we still see lo lower spot rates, uh, revenues and earnings for transport companies under, under pressure. So it will go somewhere, I don't know, it's at quarter two or quarter three, I think nobody knows it. 25, 25 will be stronger, but the question is when. Right. Uh, one of the things we've heard about impacting the truck market right now, specifically in California, are all the new regulations. We got CARB, we got EPA, we've heard about uh, truck sales being impacted there. What are you all seeing in terms of what's happening in California right now? So so, so let, let's separate CARB and EPA. I think EPA, then, then we're going to a 2027 and, you know, like always, we are compliant with the emissions and we're preparing for that uh, as, we, as we speak. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to CARB, more specifically in California, I think they're the regulations that are now in place uh, are a bit challenging. I think everybody needs to get used to it. Uh, there are formulas of electric trucks versus uh, carb compliant, etc. We have all these products in place. We're working uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to play according to the rules. I think you see some challenges left and right, call that change management. Right. Uh, but yeah, we're doing, uh, we're doing whatever we can together with our customers uh, to handle this. And uh, selling electric trucks is a very important part uh, in all that. Right. Well, and you did announce you have a 2024 CARB Omnibus compliant yep. engine here. So you've announced that on the other side. You also, perhaps more excitingly, in the availability of product, the all new VNL is rolling out in the production. You're going to market a little differently with this one in terms of how you're selling it and supporting it. What are the initial uh, reactions here to customers and fleets? So customers were very enthusiastic about the new product. Of course, we have shown the value that we believe is there. Uh, but also the ride and drive uh, impressions were very, very positive. The truck is now out at the dealership, so everybody can can demo can demo the truck. Uh, we brought this to market with a package solution. So rather than going to many different specs, we basically have four basic packages: core, edge, edge black, and ultimate from the outside and the inside. But also we have a safety package, a powertrain package, and what that does is that it makes it simpler, if you want to spec the truck, uh, it makes it simpler for the de to, for the customer to say, okay, what is it that I want out of this truck? And that makes the whole process a little bit uh, smoother. I think it's an industry first for the trucking industry. Right. Not the car industry did this before, uh, but this, yeah, it, it, it's, it's actually a really nice way of specking a truck. Well, you and you're also evolving the maintenance side of it then yeah. too. You have the blue contracts, you announced an update here at the show, but I feel like that's changing the relationship with the fleet and the dealer and you all as OEMs in terms of what they're expecting in terms of a service provider. How, are, how is that going out in the market? So what we're trying to do is to become a little bit more proactive. Mm -hmm. Rather than giving a purchase coverage, which we still do, and which is a great product, by the way, but that's more something like that is in a reactive way. Something goes wrong, you have an insurance that we fix it. What we do with the blue contract, which is a preventative maintenance contract or maintenance and preventative maintenance contract, that's basically where we proactively mm -hmm. have a relationship with the truck and the customer. We say, okay, after so many miles, you know, we want you to come in to do the service. We can do all the checks and that it keeps the truck in an, uh, in an, in an optimal state and you know, it drives your time up. But it's more proactive, it's more interactive. Uh, and I think it is also a contribution to what we say as a total solution provider. But we just we, we're there for you all the way. We reach out to you in order to make sure that we avoid problems rather than fixing them. Right, Peter. Always great catching up. I appreciate it. Yes, it's super good to have you here. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> good to see you.